Hello everybody, this is the Praetorian back with you again. For me, I'm going to discuss the U.S. government and constitutional law. I've already discussed the bankers, the socialism, family services, and non-governmental organizations. But now I'm going to actually talk about the constitution, the con constitutional law, and U.S. government. Now, in order to do that, we have to go back before the Constitution and understand what the Constitution was written about and the origins of these ideas that the Constitution came from because everyone today has this misconception that these people were just great men who thought of their own ideas and put it down on paper and that's not the facts. These ideas that the Constitution represent actually originated from other people in particularly John Locke. I'm going to discuss him a little bit tonight and then uh, we'll also discuss liberalism, the true meaning of liberalism, and John Jacques Rousseau. There's Humes, he's another person that needs to be discussed. These are philosophers who during the time that constitutional law was actually coming around, they were the ones who thought of the original ideas that eventually became the Constitution of the United States. Okay. John Locke was an English philosopher and physician regarded as one of the most influential Enlightenment thinkers and known as the father of classical liberalism. Considered one of the first of the British empiricists following the tradition of Francis Bacon, he is equally important to social contract theory. His work greatly affected the development of epistemology and political philosophy. His writings influenced Voltaire and John Jacques Rousseau. Many Scottish Enlightenment thinkers, as well as American revolutionaries, his contributions to classical republicanism and liberal theory are reflected in the United States Declaration of Independence. Locke developed the then radical notion that government acquires consent from the governed, which has to be continually present for the government to remain legitimate. His influential two treatises are in 1690, the fundamental text of liberal ideology outlined his major ideas. His insistence that lawful government did not have a supernatural basis was a sharp break with the dominant theories of governance. Bach also defined the concept of the separation of church and state based on the social contract principles Locke argued that there was a natural right to the liberty of conscience which he argued must therefore remain protected from any government authority he also formulated a general defense for religious tolerance in his letters concerning toleration Locke was influenced by the, the liberal ideas of John Milton who was a staunch advocate of freedom in all its forms. Mil Milton argued for a disestablishment as the only effective way of achieving broad tolerance. In his area, Pagetica, Milton provided one of the first arguments for the importance of freedom of speech. The liberty to know, to utter, and to argue freely, according to conscience, above all liberties. John Jacques Rousseau was a Genevan philosopher, writer, and composer in the 18th century. His political philosophy influenced the French Revolution, as well as the overall development of modern political, sociological, and educational thought. Rousseau's novel... Emile, or on education, is a, a treatise on the education of the whole person for citizenship. 
his sentimental novel, Julie or the New Halois, was of importance to the development of pre-romanticism and romanticism in fiction. Autobiographical writings, his confessions, which initiated the modern autobiography, and his reveries of the solitary walker exemplified the late 18th century movement known as the Age of Sensibility and featured an increasing focus on subjectivity and introspection that later characterized modern writing. His discourse on the origin of inequality and his, and his on the social contract are cornerstones of modern political and social thought. He argued the private property was conventional and the beginning of true civil society. Rousseau was a successful composer of music who wrote seven operas as well as music in other forms and made contributions to music as a theorist. During the period of the French Revolution, Rousseau was the most popular of the philosophers among members of the Jacobian Club. Rousseau was entered as a national hero in the Pantheon in Paris in 1794, 16 years after his death. Liberalism is a political philosophy or a worldview found on ideas of liberty and equality. Liberals espouse a wide array of views depending on their understanding of these principles, but generally they support ideas such as free and fair elections, civil rights, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, free trade, and private property. Liberalism first became a distinct political movement during the Age of Enlightenment when it became popular among philosophers. Liberalism rejected the notions common at the time of hereditary privilege, state religion, absolute monarchy, and the divine right of kings. The 17th century philosopher John Locke is often credited with founding liberalism as a distinct philosophical tradition. Locke argued that each man had a natural right to life liberty and property and according to the social contract governments must not violate those rights liberals opposed traditional conservatism and sought to replace absolutism to government with representative democracy and the rule of law the revolutionaries of the glorious revolution american revolution segments of the French Revolution and other liberal revolutionaries from that time used liberal philosophy to justify the armed overthrow of what they saw as tyrannical rule. The 19th century saw liberal governments established in nations across Europe, Spanish America, and North America. In this period, the dominant ideology opponent of liberalism was classical conservatism. During the 20th century, liberal ideas spread even further as liberal democracies found themselves on the winning side in, in both world wars. Liberalism also survived major ideological challenges from new opponents such as fascism and communism. In Europe and North America, there was also the rise of social liberalism, which is related to social democracy in Europe. That means the meaning of the world word liberalism began to diverge in different parts of the world. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica in the United States, liberalism is associated with the welfare state's policies of the New Deal program of the Democratic Administration of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, whereas in Europe it is more commonly associated with a commitment to limited government. Consequently, in the U.S., the idea of individualism and liaisons fair economics previously associated with classical liberal liberalism 
became the basis for the emerging school of right-wing libertarian thought. Today, liberal po political parties remain a political force with varying degrees of power and influence on many countries. One of the first recorded instances of the word liberal occurred in 1375 when it was used to describe the liberal arts in the context of an education desirable for a free-born man. The word's early connection with the classical education of a medieval university soon gave way to a proliferation of different denotations and connotations. Liberal could refer to free in bestowed as early as 1387, made without stint in 1433, freely permitted in 1530, and free from restraint, often as a pejorative remark in the 16th and the 17th century. In 16th century England, liberal could have positive or negative attributes in referring to someone's plea, generosity, or indiscretion. In Much Ado About Nothing, Shakespeare wrote of a liberal villain who hath confessed his vile encounters with the rise of the Enlightenment. The word acquired decisively more positive undertones, being defined as free from narrow prejudice in 1781 and free from bigotry in 1823. In 1815, the first use of the word liberalism appeared in England. By the middle of the 19th century, liberals started to be used as a politicized term for parties and movements all over the world. The Social Contract Quentin Skinner has argued that several critical modern innovations in contract theory are found in the writings from French Calvinists and Hung Hungonauts, whose work in turn was invoked by writers in the Low Countries who, who objected to their subjection to Spain and later still by Catholics in England. Among these Francisco Suarez from 1848 to 1617. From the school of Salamanca might be considered as an early theorist of the social contract, theorizing natural law in an attempt to limit the divine right of absolute monarchy. All of these groups were led to articulate notions of popular sovereignty by means of a social covenant or contract. All of these arguments began with proto-state of nature arguments to the effect that the basis of politics is that everyone is by nature free of subjection to any government. However, these arguments rely on a corporatist theory found in Roman law, according to which a populace can exist as a distinct legal entity. Therefore, these arguments held that the group of people can join a government because it has the capacity to exercise a single will and make decisions with a single voice in the absence of sovereign authority. A notion rejected by Hobbes and later contract theorist John Jacou Rousseau in 1712 to 1778 in his influential 1762 treatise, The Social Contract outlined a different version of the social contract theory as the foundation of political rights based on unlimited popular sovereignty. Although Rousseau wrote that the British were perhaps at the time the freest people on earth, he did not approve of their representative government. 